Jeremiah 33. 33. So this is a good exercise for you. And you can use the, the, the notepads that you have in front of you. I think we even have some pens that you can use. We're ready. We're ready. Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. And I'm just going to read the, the, the first phrase. I think it answers it. Call to me. This is God speaking. Call to me and I will what? Answer you. Answer you. So I personally believe from everything that I've read from Genesis through Revelation that God always answers our prayers. The problem, though, in our perception, we may think that he doesn't, but he does. So sometimes he answers our prayers just like we ask. Sometimes he answers our prayers by saying, hmm, not yet, maybe in a little while when the time is right. And sometimes his answer is no. Now, let's relate this to us as parents. I'm a father, I have two children, now I have a beautiful, beautiful granddaughter. If you ask me for a picture, I'll be glad to pull out all the photos. But uh, you know as parents that sometimes when our kids come to us and are asking for something, you don't always give them exactly what they want. Sometimes yes, sometimes later, or sometimes no. But we always answer our kids' requests in one way or another. It's the same thing with God. So can we trust him even when he doesn't answer prayers the way we wish he would answer? No question about it because let's remember one thing. God knows best. Always. Just like, you know, there was a, I'm going to age my, myself a little bit, there was a, a TV show by the name of Father Knows Best. And uh, that, was, that, was, that was good, clean comedy. But the Father Knows Best. And that's the thing, it is, it, how it works with our kids. And this is really how it works with God. So we can absolutely, Dave, we can absolutely trust Him always. So if you have a question, let me emphasize this. We have some little cards in the box that your cable host will give you. We have the box right back there. And every night we'll answer one. I don't have the time to answer a lot because if I do, we won't have time for a presentation. So every night one, and, uh, and I'll have to choose, oh, which one, which one, which one. So be patient with me, and uh, if we don't answer your question, come up to me privately and uh, I'll, uh, I'll do my very best to, to help out. Okay? Thank you very much. Thanks, Eve. And if you put your name on your question card, then we will certainly come and, and speak with you if we're not able to answer it up front. All right. It's time for our theme song. We have a group of musicians here tonight, and Lillian will be leading us in the song. Everyone doing? Can you hear me okay? Uh, no? How about now? How about now? <laughs> the deer. Isn't that a lovely song? Today we have now not only our pianist, Crystal, but we have Don and Dana. So our, our, our band is growing back here. <laughs> All right. So why don't we stand up? And, you know, the reason why we like to have a theme song is because it just prepares our heart for the message. It just invites the spirit to be with us. All right. So remember what I said. I don't sing too well, so I need you to sing louder than me. All right.
All right, now I'm on. All right, I just want to mention a couple things here before we pray and get started. Uh, you should have at your table this little schedule that tells you what's coming up. Uh, tonight we're going to be looking at uh, some of the very clear signs that are happening in the world that tell us that something great and amazing is soon going to happen. So that's tonight. Tomorrow night, tomorrow night, same place, same time, is there hope for our planet. This is really one of those very encouraging presentations because it's easy to wonder, you know, is this world just spinning out of control and there is no hope for us? It's, uh, it's hopeless. Well, it isn't. And I think you're going to be so absolutely encouraged, invigorated, energized, hope-filled by the time you leave tomorrow night. And then on Monday, don't miss... No, you want to miss Monday. <laughs> you want to miss Monday. If you show up here on Monday night, it's going to be pretty dark <laughs> and pretty locked up. So uh, Monday night, do what you need to do so that you don't miss Tuesday night, the Messiah and the Judgment. That's really one of my favorite presentations. We're going to dive right into one of the most interesting Bible prophecies. Actually, the longest Bible prophecy, time prophecy in the Bible. And that's going to be on Tuesday night. And then, of course, the greatest event in Earth's history ahead of us. And that is the second coming of Jesus. So don't miss any of our presentations. Remember what I said. Each presentation prepares you for the next one. And then the next one. So if you miss any, and I hope you don't, but if you miss any, you might come and you're like, ah, I'm having a hard time putting this together. You'll catch up. Don't worry. You'll catch up. You'll be fine. But it'll make more sense if you're here every single night. All right? Hey, by the way, I'm, I was excited. I'm excited. I discovered that I'm not the only Swiss in this room. <laughs> Made my day. Usually there's not remotely another Swiss anywhere I go, but I've got a Swiss right here, Roland. He's a Swiss. He sounds like a Swiss, by the way. You know, you can tell when a person speaks, you know, your, your language, French for me, and I'm saying, oh, yeah, he does sound like a Swiss. There's a little Swiss accent in the French. Canton de Vaux. That's it. So uh, it, it, I'm just so excited. I've got to be on best behavior here. <laughs> we have to make sure we end on, start on time because he's going to be like this. <laughs> yes, yes. Hey, We've got to finish on time. I'm going to see Roland going like that. Roland, let me ask you this. Are you wearing a Swiss watch? No. No watch? Okay, well, that, so Roland is never going to go like this. I don't even wear a Swiss watch. I know. I know. Shame on me. All right, well, let's, uh, let's pray. Father God, it is good. It is good to be with my friends here. And we're all eager to dive into the Bible, to, to learn some things that will make a difference in our lives. Lord, I humble myself before you and I submit myself into, hand, into your hands. Use me, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, as you're driving, and tonight seeing the signs, but uh, uh, imagine yourself driving, and you're, all of us had to drive here. You have your hands on the wheel and... Uh, I've got this well here. And, uh, and then, I don't know if you see it there, but a light comes on. Is this light? Is this working? All right. I'll point to it. The light comes on on your, on your dash there. What does it say? What does it mean? What should you do? What does it tell you? First of all, it tells you you have a potential problem. And the redder the light, the bigger the problem. If it's yellow or orange, I think it's just a telling you something bad may happen soon. Just be weary. But if it's red, you probably want to pull over to the side of the road. It's, it's a clear sign that something is not right. Uh, what about a sign like this? 
You know, you're driving, soon we'll be facing the winter. We'll see things like this, hopefully not too much of it. But uh, you'll see snow and ice, and if there's a sign that says slippery road, and often as you approach bridges, it will often say uh, the bridge freezes before the road. And if it's 26 degrees, when you see something like this, what should you do? Stay home. <laughs> I agree. Just stay home. Not worth it. Not worth it. Uh, but, you know, these are things we, we look out for. Uh, what if uh, you wake up in the morning and uh, you're, you're feeling a little warm? Uh, you check your temperature and you've got fever. What should you do? Well, you should pray, maybe stay home, or maybe if it's not going away, you should see a doctor. Fever is always a sign that something is not right. Okay, so we're surrounded by signs all the time. Uh, it's, it's clear that uh, we should do something about it. A, a guy was not feeling well. He had fever and other symptoms, so he went to see his doctor, and the doctor did all sorts of tests. You know how they do this, battery of tests, uh, drawn blood, etc. and the doctor comes back and says it's serious, uh, but we can treat it if you come back soon. The guy didn't come back soon. Well, at least not as soon as he should have. He came back a year later. I guess his definition of soon was not the same as the doctor's definition of soon. So when he returned, the doctor said, I'm sorry, uh, what you have has just gone too far and there's nothing we can do now. So, you know, he didn't pay attention to the warning signs. To his doctor, we need to be very careful to watch out for signs. They're there to help us out. Um, you know, like I said, we have these check engine signs that tell us that we need to, to, to be careful. If you're feeling tired, your body is telling you that you should get some rest. Absolutely. If uh, Fifi, your dog, I, no, maybe no one calls their dog Fifi, you know, Brutus, but, you know, the, the, the little chihuahuas, I tell you, they're fierce. Uh, my little dog, uh, a dog this size, her name is Emma. So I'll, f I'll use her name instead. So if I hear Emma barking, you know, the temptation is to say to your dog, be quiet. But maybe the dog is warning you that someone is trying to get into your window, into your house. So, you know, we should be looking out for these signs all the time. A, a guy bought a, uh, a barometer. You know, I'm looking around, and I bet you a lot of you know what barometers are. Uh, every home used to have one. Now we just have the weather channel. My kids have no clue what a barometer is. What? Huh? 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 What? A barometer measures atmospheric pressure. And uh, in our house, when I grew up, Switzerland, we had a barometer. My dad would look at it and get a feel of what was coming. So this gentleman, this is a story, true story, he bought a barometer back a long time ago in the 1930s. He bought a barometer, and it arrived. And uh, it was a beautiful day, but the barometer its arrow was pointing at the label that says stormy, storms coming, or something along those lines. And it wouldn't change. It was just pointing to that, and the guy got frustrated, and, and he says, you know, it's, it's just not working. I bought myself a, a bad barometer, and so he took it back to return it. Guess what happened? A storm came, 1938. A huge hurricane came through, uh, if only he'd listened to or taken attention to his barometer. But it was such a big, big hurricane that came barreling through New York. Uh, I'm told that 700 people died. Uh, you know, so it, it, was, it was the real thing. And the barometer was actually correct, correct. A lot of stuff is happening in the world today. And you wonder if any of these things happening in the world today could be signs of an impending 
whatever in our future. Uh, you know, we, we see acts of terror. Uh, and I don't know if you looked at the news today, but uh, there is some terror and some terrible things happening in the Middle East as we speak. And, uh, and so you wonder when you, you see terrorist attacks, is this a sign? And by the way, you don't have to go to the Middle East to see terror. We have experienced it right here in our own country as well. Uh, when, uh, when we see more and more shootings, people, you know, just uh, uh, randomly shooting other people. As a matter of fact, my daughter-in-law, I may tell you her story uh, along the way here, but uh, she, uh, she's, she's the victim of a uh, drive-by shooting that left her paralyzed waist down. So, you know, this is, this is real stuff. Uh, and, and people, I don't know if you realize this, people are sicker than ever, sicker than ever. We, we come up with all sorts of new disease, even though knowledge seems to be at a peak. So what is going on? Could all of these things be a sign of what's coming? Could it be? Well, in the Bible, Jesus gives a sign, and we're going to look at these signs. But before we, we look at the signs the Bible gives us, and some of them are very much related to what I've already mentioned, let me ask you this question. Can God in his word be trusted? Because I tell you this, if we cannot agree on that, then whatever I'm going to say next really will be of no meaning. So we need to agree. And that's why last night we talked about God can be trusted. Tonight we're going to pick up on that. And if God can be trusted, then the signs that he shares with us can certainly be taken seriously. So let's start in Matthew chapter 24. And by the way, Matthew 24, if you know anything about it, Matthew 24 is, is your signs of the times chapter. Jesus tells us what's going to be coming at the end of times. And we read here, Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us when these things will be. Talking about these terrible things, uh, the impending doom or whatever. And what will be the sign, the sign of your what? Coming, your second coming and of the end of the age. That's the question. What will be the sign? Now, before I... I really delve into these signs. I want to be clear about something. One thing I'm not going to do, because I cannot do it, because no one can do it, is tell you when Jesus will return. I mean, it's impossible. Uh, what we're going to look at is signs that tell us when we are approaching his return. But I don't know the year, the month, the day. I don't know when he is going to return. And why do I say this? Because Jesus himself said it. But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. So I just want to be clear on this. Uh, you're never going to hear me, and I don't believe anyone in this church ever say, well, let me tell you, between you and I, it's going to happen on such and such a date. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. All right, so what are some of these signs? With that in mind, what are some of these signs? Let's start here. Uh, verse 6, Matthew 24, verse 6. And we're going to spend the bulk of our time in the book of Matthew uh, chapter 24. And he says, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. Okay, well, uh, you know, you go back to the last 110 years or so, and uh, you can just line them up. World War I, 1914 to 1917, 24 million people died, and it was such a, a, a horrible event of such magnitude that no one had ever seen with so many deaths. They called it the Great War, of course, and they called it also the war to end all wars. You can't have this ever happen again. And just less than a couple decades later, or about a couple de decades later, it happened again, World War II. 
and if you thought 24 million people dying was a lot, 60 plus million died during World War II. And then it just continued. You think of the wars, the Korean War, the Vietnam War. By the way, the Swiss guys, we don't know anything about wars because we're neutral. We stay out of it, or at least we try to stay out of it. Uh, but you have the Vietnam War, the Gulf War, uh, the war on terrorism. Uh, uh, there's wars taking place all around the world. I, I was checking on this just recently. Right now, as we speak, there are over 100 uh, wars or conflicts taking place as we speak. It's happening right now. Now, in terms of, of rumors of war, well, you know, I just mentioned Israel just a moment ago, and the prime minister there essentially made this declaration. He says, we are at war. He, he actually said that. We are at war. Uh, in the last uh, 24 hours, uh, hundreds of people on both sides have been uh, killed or injured, and uh, it's only going to get worse. It's only going to get worse. So we're going to wake up probably tomorrow to hear more terrible things happening in that part of the world. It's kind of scary. It's kind of scary. But in terms of, of other wars, we've been following from a distance another war that's taking place uh, in kind of Europe. And that would be Ukraine. I say kind of Europe because it's so far east that it's almost no longer in Europe. But it's still in Europe. It's still in Europe. Uh, Ukraine and, and Russia. Absolutely. Absolutely. And rumors of war. I don't know if you, you follow the news, but, you know, there's always tensions with Taiwan and China. And you wonder, is that ever going to happen? Is China going to say, that's it, we're going to take back what we consider ours? And then we have a, a, a very crazy man in a place called North Korea. And he's always thinking about causing problems. So we know that this sign, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, is definitely true. And the intensity and the magnitude and the possibility that these missiles can kill is, is always increasing. It's deadlier than ever. When you see these things happen, here's what Jesus said. Now learn... This parable, I'm reading a little bit further in the chapter 24. Now learn this parable from the fig tree when its branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves. You know that summer is what? Is near. You know, I'm thinking if Jesus were, you know, in Pennsylvania and, and walking around, you know, he wouldn't have said this. He would have said, when you start seeing the foliage, turn yellow or red, he would have said, you know that, no, I'm going to say, you know that, winter, winter is near. Isn't that true? When you see things turning, and by the time our series ends in a little, in a few weeks, uh, we'll be driving here and we'll be having to make sure we keep our eyes on the road because it's going to be pretty outside. It's such a beautiful time of the year. But what is it telling you? Winter is fast approaching for sure. Let me read on here. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is what? Near. We don't know when, but we know that it is, it, it is near at the door very clear. What is at the doors? You're probably wondering. What is at the door? What is it? Well, the Bible answers it very clearly. When these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption is near. And what is our redemption that is fast approaching? That is the second coming of Jesus Christ for sure. This is when Jesus will put an end to all these wars. Enough is enough. All this terror, all this sickness, all this junk, he will say, it's over. And all of us will say, finally, it will be a great day. It will be wonderful. 
Let's go back to some more signs. This is one that maybe you haven't heard much about, but it's there in the Bible. We go to Matthew 24, 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days. And uh, this is a reference to the dark ages when things were very, very tough. A lot of tribulation, a lot of pain, a lot of persecution, a lot of junk. So after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven will be what? Will be shaken. Wow. So after the dark ages, there is a dark day that occurred. And it actually happened in, on May 19, 1780. A few years ago, the BBC uh, news service in England ran an article that was entitled, What Caused the Dark Day? Now, I want you to, to listen carefully. I'm going to read just uh, an excerpt from this article here. It's quite insightful. Three centuries ago, that would be back in 1780, in parts of North America, strange events turned morning to night. It remains wreathed in mystery. So what caused the dark day? Halfway through the morning, the sky turns yellow. Animal, animals run for cover and darkness descends, causing people to light candles and start to pray. By lunchtime, lunchtime night has fallen. Is it the end of the world? People were asking. Guess why they were asking that question? Because they read their Bibles and they read Matthew 24 and they read that after this time of tribulation, there would be a dark day a fulfillment of prophecy. Now, some of you might say, what, 1780? Is, is this telling us that Jesus is coming back soon? Here we are three centuries later, and he has not yet returned. Well, keep in mind something. 300 years in the scope of the existence of planet Earth, that's just a very small amount of time. You know, we're saying, wow, you know... Uh, a few years is a long time. The older you get, uh, you will agree with me that, uh, that time passes by really, really, really fast. You know, I'm, I, I think back when I, I was starting in ministry, and it feels honestly just like yesterday. And here I am, an old guy. No, I'm not. <laughs> but I'm definitely older than what I was. All I'm telling you here is simply that, that yes, we, at that time they entered this period. Jesus is coming back soon. And remember, it also talked about stars falling. Remember that text? It also mentioned that. And uh, some who were alive at that time, this did not happen in 1780. It happened in, uh, on November uh, 13, 18. Uh, 33, so a few decades later, there was this, this amazing rain shower of stars. People uh, who witnessed this wrote down the very heavens seem to be ablaze. We're talking about at nine time. And the Pittsburgh Gazette, so in our very own state of Pennsylvania, an article was written at that time, and here's what they wrote. Some say it looked as if the heavens were pouring down showers of fire. Others that it resembled the falling of brilliant and burning snow. Not an occasional spit here and there, but as it would look in a storm, save only that the flakes flew in the opposite direction to the wind. What a sight it must have been. Why do I share this with you? Just to tell you that clearly we see some signs happening that are telling us that we are marching steadily towards the second coming of Jesus Christ. All right, let's get back to some other signs that are mentioned in the Bible. And by the way, when these things begin to happen, I should mention this, Luke 21, 28. Again, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. Matthew 24, verse 7. We'll look at a few more signs. For nation will rise against nation. We kind of have hit on that already, the rumors of wars, the wars, and kingdom against kingdom. 
And then Jesus adds this. And there will be what? Famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. Now, across the world in the last uh, few uh, decades, uh, we certainly have heard about famines in this world. Now, for us, this does not hit us as hard, I have to admit. We who live in the United States of America, we who live or have lived in Western Europe, uh, you know, famines don't mean as much because we seem to have an abundance of food. We do. We do. Even those who have less food have still a lot more food than those who don't have food. I want to make sure you, you understand this. Uh, we're so blessed here. Uh, I mean, I can just walk to Redner's, just around the corner from where I live. And if I don't like Redner's and if I don't like their selection, I'm just going to go to Giant's. And if I don't like Giant, I'm going to find the Walmart. Uh, never mind. <laughs> I'm going to have someone come and talk to me. I work at Walmart. And how dare you say this? All I'm telling you is you got options and lots of options. My wife recently has been canning applesauce and tomatoes. Ah, oh, marvelous stuff. But in some parts of the world, there is no such thing. Uh, let me give you some of the facts. The United Nations says that one in nine people don't get enough food to live a healthy, active life. One child dies every five seconds from hunger-related causes. You know, we're saying we don't see this here, but it's happening. It's happening. And one-third of all the food produced in the world is lost or wasted every year. Let me tell you the shocking truth here. There's 220 pounds of food wasted per person per year. While every 12, every minute, 12 children die of hunger-related illnesses. I mean, you think in a world that is as smart as we are, as, as highly developed in technology that we would figure out how to make sure everyone had enough food and no food would go to waste. Hmm? But it's the reality and this is a sign of the times for sure. And then if you recall, or and I'll recall, it's right there on the screen still, it says pestilences. What is this a reference to? I'll give you a hint. This is a reference to disease. Okay? Uh, disease epidemics. Let me give you some, uh, some figures here. About 3.3 million people died in 2022. Okay? That's what I read. What claimed the majority of people's deaths? Well, you'd think 3.3 million people who died, probably they died of old age. But that's not the case. So what did people die of? And I'm, I'm going to give you the, the figures I could find for that, and that's 2021, but I would assume it's not too different in 2022. So here we go. 695,000 people died of heart disease. 605,000 people died of cancer. 417,000 people died this, of this thing called COVID, something we hadn't heard of before. 162,000 people died of stroke. 119,000 Alzheimer's. 103,000 pe people died of diabetes. 56,000 people died of liver disease. 54,000 died of kidney disease. And when you add up all those numbers, it adds up to 67% of all deaths, the three 3.3 million people who died, died of some type of disease. Wow. Wow. We all know someone who died from one or many of these diseases, right? We all do. It's a real fact. It's, it's a real thing. Now, you add to the names that I've mentioned here some newer disease. Uh, AIDS. Well, you said that's not new. Well, it was new in the 80s. Now it's been around for a few decades, but it's still one of those newer disease, AIDS, mad cow disease, you know, stuff that, what on earth is that? Uh, SARS, Ebola, and then more recently I'm hearing new variants of COVID are coming back. Here we go again. I hope not. 
But here's what I, I read that kind of opened my eyes. In today's interconnected world, it only takes 36 hours for a pathogen to spread around the globe, a threat that is even more real when the world remains underprepared to prevent, detect, and respond to a public health emergency. And I think that was real notice when COVID struck. 36 hours, and it goes from here to around the world just like this. And then on top of that, some old diseases are making a comeback. You know, I remember my parents talking about tuberculosis, and we thought it was gone, and it's over. Guess what? It's coming back. Measles. And I've even heard that even some forms of leprosy are making a comeback, too. Interesting. Interesting. So these are all signs of the times. It's pretty clear. Now, that's not the only thing that Jesus mentioned. He also mentioned something about earthquakes. Do you see that? So let's talk about earthquakes. I know here in Pennsylvania, we don't think about earthquakes because we're not really an earthquake country, right? When I do a presentation like this in California, everybody's like... <laughs> in Pennsylvania, it's like... <laughs> Did you know there's a fault that goes through Pennsylvania? Might as well tell you. It's called the Ramapo fault. Maybe I pronounced it wrong, but... I'm just reading it here, Ramapo Fault. And uh, no, it's, it's probably not as active as the San Andreas Fault in California, but uh, you know what? You never know. You never know. So let's talk about earthquakes. We know that uh, there has been a few earthquakes around the world. Let me give you this slide here. Uh, there was a big earthquake in a few years ago in Japan that was so huge that... Literally, it shifted the whole island, I'm told, by about six feet. All right, to move an island six feet, you've got to have a big earthquake. And there was a tsunami that followed that killed 15,000 people. Then there was a big earthquake back in 2004 that also caused a big tsunami that killed about 230,000 people in, uh, in off the Indian Ocean. You remember that one. We'll never forget the day after Christmas. Then we hear about earthquakes this year, just this year. I'm going to mention just the ones I heard this year. I don't know if you follow the news, but a few weeks ago there was an earthquake in a place called Turkey. Turkey. We saw all the images of people trying to, to dig through the rubble and save people's lives. I, I think they were, I think they ended up with at least 50,000 people dead. And then more recently, we heard of an earthquake in Morocco. And today, I was reading uh, tonight that there was an earthquake in parts of Afghanistan. Earthquakes are happening all the time. Here's the interesting thing. A friend of mine did a little research. He went back a thousand plus years, and he noticed something. He noticed that the, the, the frequency of earthquakes and the intensity was increasing. So that today we're seeing a lot more earthquakes and they're more strong than they used to be in the past. Could it be that this indeed is true? Another sign that Jesus Christ is coming back soon. Then I want to lump in something else while we're talking about natural disasters. I want to add uh, tornadoes and hurricanes because they also seem to be coming at a faster rate than ever before. We'll never forget Katrina. I wonder if the name Katrina suddenly went down in terms of people naming their kids Katrina. And then there was Rita. And there were many others. But let me read something interesting. I, I, I was just reading this a couple days ago. A close look at hurricane records from 1980 to 2022. So in the last... Uh, 42 years, reveals that hurricane activity is increasing in the North American basin. You know, this is fact uh, based on facts, on science. An analysis shows that the number of hurricanes is trending upward, and so is the number of major 
hurricanes, that is, storms reaching Category 3 status, which have sustained winds of 111 miles per hour. The most active years during this period, because it doesn't come every single year, but it's more and more often, but those most active years, 1995, 2005, 2010, 2020, and each of these years produced more than 10 storms that achieve no less than a Category 1 status. Wow. Something is happening. And uh, you know what I, 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 I've I noticed is people are noticing this. You think it's just the Christians that are noticing something's happening. But also, very wealthy billionaires, that sounds like it shouldn't go together. Billionaires are wealthy, so it's not wealthy billionaires, just billionaires. But billionaires are noticing this. They're saying, you know, something's going on. There's... There's more trouble in the world. There's more violence in the world. There is more natural disasters in the world. There's more, 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 more. And so we need to prepare. This is, this is what uh, uh, people are noticing. And, and this comes from an article that someone wrote. And guess where they're going? They're looking for a place where they could be safe. They're looking for a place where they can build a, a bunker or something, a house that will withstand whatever. And they've targeted a place called New Zealand because it's out of the way. And there we should be safe. And they're going over there, buying property, building stuff. Why? Because even these people who may be agnostic and atheistic, who don't believe in God, are acknowledging and realizing Today is not like it used to be. Times have changed. And guess what? They are indeed. God saw it coming, and uh, we should be seeing it as well. Are there more signs? Glad you asked, because there are more. Matthew 24, verse 37. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. So how were things in the days of Noah? Okay, we're going to take a little trip back to the book of Genesis and see how it were and see how today's going to be compared to what it was back then. The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of thoughts of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. I think we're beginning to see a little bit of that. I don't know if you've noticed, but in our country here, there seems to be more hatred towards other people than ever before. You know, you just need to look at our, our capital. Uh, you, know, the, 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 you know, two sides of the aisle. I remember when the two sides might disagree, but they were still going to be cordial. And we're still going to have supper or dinner together. We're going to get along. We may not agree on stuff, but we're going to get along. Do you think that's happening today? I don't think so. They literally hate each other, the two sides and, and more. Let's read on here. In Genesis chapter 6, verse 11, the earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with what? Violence. Do we see violence today like never before? Does it sound like we're living in days of Noah again? Absolutely. You know, we are facing shootings all the time. I'll never forget this one. This was back in 1999. This is Columbine. You remember Columbine? We all remember Columbine, for sure. And uh, 15 young people died. It, it just shook our nation. And we thought, it can never happen again. Because it was so rare. And then it's happened again. And again, and again, in, uh, you know, just looking ahead, 2007, there were many before that again, but uh, that one was a huge one on a college campus uh, in Virginia, 33 died. And then in Norway, 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 the haven of violence, not at all. Norway is a very peaceful country, very peaceful country. And yet some maniac went on the killing rampage and uh, 77 people uh, were killed. 
And then not just too long ago, back in 2017, I'll add this one because this was kind of shocking to us. A uh, 64-year-old man decided to go to, I forget what floor, in a Las Vegas hotel. They were having a music festival right below, and he started just shooting people down. And, uh, and there was quite a few people who died. Uh, 60 people were killed and 413 who were wounded. Now, you know, when, when the news of shooting happens, it happens so often that, you know what, we're like, oh, it's another one. It's another one. We become numb to it, haven't we? Because it's so commonplace. It's like, uh, you know, it, you, if, if, if it's in the news and if you don't pay attention, you, you, you miss it. You miss it. It's like, you know, there's so much violence that uh, it's like, oh, it's just another guy or another person just went on a killing rampage and it's just kind of crazy. And we know we live under the scourge of terrorism. We'll never forget 9-11. You remember where you were on 9-11? All of us. I remember exactly where I was. I was in my office at my church when I the news started to come up on the on the on online it's like what and it just got worse from there you remember that day could it happen again oh yeah it could happen again you know the state department today i think is 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 giving you warnings before you travel they say check with the state department to make sure that the country you're planning to visit is safe now according to the state department i'll say this they will probably tell you that you shouldn't travel ever. I'm sure they found something about Switzerland that you need to watch out for. But, uh, but the truth is there are places that you certainly do not want to travel to because it is dangerous. Crime is high, terror is high, and you definitely want to avoid those places. So when I used to travel, I would take a look and consider that, whether I should go there or not. So when you see all these things happen, we better hope uh, that Jesus was talking about our times because if he wasn't, I'd hate to see how much worse it could get if you think about it. Well, let me go to what we did last night. We're going to have our group questions. So uh, my, uh, my table host, you want to take, uh, take note of this. So with your, with your table, here is what I want you to talk about or at least consider. What sign, and we <laughs> made a mention quite a few here tonight, and maybe there, and there's more than just that, but what sign are you most fearful of? What sign is the one that just <gasps> hits you the most? I'm going to give you three minutes, so discuss it within your group. What sign are you most fearful of?
continue here. Thank you for your responses. The Bible tells us something interesting. When you consider all the songs of the time, all of them, and we've looked at, and there's more that uh, you realize. But the Bible says all these are the beginnings of what? Sorrows. And when you look at the word sorrow, okay, and you do a little search and Hebrew study on the word sorrows, it essentially means a labor pain. Labor pain. Now, I'm going to tell you right up front here, I have no clue what labor pains are. <laughs> and that's, if I were any man who tells me I know what it's about, you are a liar. <laughs> My wife, though, is an expert in labor pains. And I remember we had a man for 70 years, we used to go to town and we would stand there and we would pull apart and we would pull together and we had no idea what was going on. She's pregnant, we're pregnant. The knowledge that Daniel is currently talking about is the knowledge regarding the past, spiritual knowledge. And I think we can see each of us are that there's probably more knowledge in regards to the Bible than there is in the church. Why? Because the Bible is the number one uh, bestseller in all languages. All languages. People want it. People read it. People may not understand it, but they certainly are constructing it. 
But I want to believe that it's not just knowledge as in Bible knowledge. I think we can agree that there's also a lot of knowledge in other areas as well. Let me show you. That, uh, well, I don't, I'll, I'll show you in a second. 